This is the Secure and Entrepreneur Show for top performing business professionals with massive wealth aspirations. And I'm your host, Aurora Day. Welcome and thank you for joining me here on the 46th episode of the Secured Entrepreneur Show. Today is the first day of the third quarter in this most revealing year of 2020. Miss Aurora is here to say that we have certainly come a long way in a fairly short period of time. The first two quarters of this year was met with so much unexpected change and many of us have been forced to stop. We've been forced to regroup. We've been forced to reassess and even reinvent our businesses. You know, reinvent the way that we've been doing business and the way that we've been communicating publicly as well as privately. As we here at Aurora Day Consulting have continued to serve all of you secured entrepreneurs, we do know that there has been an overwhelming energy of despair and wondering. Some of you have been very concerned about what your future looks like as a business owner who has less than 500 employees, and I mean way less than 500 employees, and how you're going to realistically stay on track, stay on target with your six and seven figure earnings. So today, Miss Aurora is going to get into how your small business is actually helping the economy right now while in turn increasing your finances. I'm Aurora Day. Protecting your business starts before you open for business. First, I want to address those of you who are emailing us about revamping your brick and mortar businesses. Most of you here in the Secured Entrepreneur community know that I'm not a fan of owning or operating any type of brick and mortar business because of the high percentage of tax, both federal and state, that the proprietor will pay in addition to many other unattractive factors involved. And we know that the current pandemic has really shed some unwelcome light on these things. However, the positive thing that comes out of having a brick and mortar business in your community is that the tax dollars of the local residents who will patronize your business stay within the local economy. Now, when that happens, now we're accomplishing economic development. Also, local business owners have a tendency to shop local. So their economic activity is flowing right back through the community, not to mention the creation of local jobs. When people have the ability to work within their own communities without having to commute like an hour and some change away, they will also eat lunch in the community. They're going to happy hour at the local restaurant or bar. And of course, they're gonna have dinner at a local restaurant. So large amounts of money is staying in that community. Okay, here's where Miss Aurora is going with this. For all of the secured entrepreneurs who are operating local brick and mortar businesses, please have an online component that allows you to sell internationally. I cannot stress this enough. If you continue to depend on your local community only, you are at risk of missing out on your financial goals. We've already seen how the working class people were prevented from doing local things during this pandemic and businesses that were not considered essential were forced to close. Many businesses needed to obtain these loans to keep employees and keep their doors open, but we know that most will be forced straight out of business. Now, because this is going to be a reality for many small business owners, the path that requires less infrastructure and almost no public services is the winner winner vegan dinner. When we fully participate in a virtual shopping experience, or we create a virtual rapport with our target audience, we gain the ability to move faster and cover more ground. 
Now you're really helping the economy while maintaining your six and seven figure business goals because the likelihood of you personally shopping in your local community is like predestined. You're going to your local supermarket, your local coffee shop, your local smoothie shop, your local sandwich shop without hesitation. One, because it's convenient. And two, you've got the financial means to circulate as much currency as you'd like. Okay, we've got through all of that. Now, how are we maintaining and even increasing our financial goals right now? Uh-oh, Miss Aurora is about to say it. <laughs> Price, value, and demand for our products and services. Price, value, and demand for our products and services. Whew, that was hard, that was hard. The products and services that you are offering are directly affecting your earnings. Many of you are offering products and services that are no longer in demand and you know it. The sad part is that these products were all the rage before the pandemic. We're watching this happen. Now, because it's been a hardship for you to adjust to this rapid change, what you have is no longer relevant. You've got to adjust and make the necessary changes. You may need some high ticket products, some high ticket services, or some high ticket packages that are irresistible to your clients or your target audience, or let me say to your clients and your target audience, all right? You may need some new products and services that provide more value as we are riding the wave of this global pandemic. So let me just tell you all, we're working on formulas this quarter in the Go From Sole Proprietor to CEO group in Facebook or on Facebook you're welcome to come join us there as the link will be below here on YouTube. Make it happen. All right, I'm ready to get into the next episode. Remember to like, share, and subscribe here on Stitcher, CastBox, iTunes, Facebook, and of course YouTube. Oh, and by the way, be sure to stop by www.auroradayconsulting.com. That's A-U-R-O-R-A-H-D-E-Y, consulting.com. And until next time, with Aurora Day, you are secure.